My name is Ian. Welcome to Central Park. I work for the Central Park Conservancy and we are the nonprofit that takes care of Central Park. And we understand that it is unfortunately difficult to make it to Central Park for many people right now. So we here at the Central Park Conservancy want to bring the park to you through this series of weekly walks. You can join us every 12.30 p.m. Eastern time for a lunchtime stroll through Central Park. And thank you for everyone uh, for joining us. Your support means a lot. This has become my favorite time of the week. So I'm eager to share another beautiful part of Central Park with you today. All of the photographs you'll see were taken by myself in the past week. And I've included a couple historical images from the Parks Department archives, the Museum of the City of New York, as well as the New York Public Library Digital Archives. This will take about 15 minutes we'll get to explore the park for. Before we begin our walk, just a little bit of housekeeping. As many of you are doing, uh, you can use the Zoom chat feature found in the control bar to say hello or add a comment. I really appreciate all of your kind words and questions. And if you do have a question that you'd like answered, you can ask it in the Q&A section of the Zoom control bar and one of my colleagues, Juan or Ryan, will answer those. And lastly, you'll see a poll pop up on your screen a couple times during this walk. I'll do the first one now, actually. I ask this every week, you'll be familiar with it, just if you've attended our tours. So if you wouldn't mind answering, that'd be great because it's helpful for us um, to know who we're, we're talking to. So you can always X that out if it's uh, on your screen and you don't want it on your screen as well. That's the end of the housekeeping. So we'll jump on in. On the left, you'll see the entire uh, map of Central Park in case you want to get an idea of exactly where we are. And we're in just north of the middle of the park around the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir. You'll see here it takes up a substantial portion of the park. It's 106 acres, making it the largest single landscape of the park. On the right, you can see it in a bit more detail here. Um, we will begin our walk north of the reservoir and loop down. For those of you that have attended our weekly walks before, you'll know that we visited here before a few months ago during the summer. Uh, my colleague Brendan led a walk beginning on the east side going around the northern side of the reservoir. So today I'm going to complete the loop and we'll see some new sites. And of course it's autumn, so the views are a bit different. We'll end just about where Brendan began on the east side and you can see that denoted by these red dots here. Here we are on Central Park West, northwest of the reservoir at the Gate of All Saints. Just past this gate, I noticed Another one of these banners that have popped up over the last few months. I like hearing your comments in this chat and it's nice to see what visitors have to say around the park as well. Uh, this visitor said, the trees, flowers and wildlife all give me peace. I certainly feel that way. That's why I love working at Central Park and I hope these short walks give you a sense of that peace that you uh, enjoy visiting the park. And this reminded me of our mission statement which I wanted to share because it's relevant to our walk, I think. And our mission at the Central Park Conservancy is to preserve and celebrate Central Park as a sanctuary from urban life, enhancing the enjoyment and well being of all. So I hope these walks do enhance your enjoyment of Central Park, whether you're someone who's visited a thousand times and you learned one new nugget of information, or if you're someone who lives across the globe and uh, this sparks an interest in this a wonderful urban park we have. And past that sign to get to the reservoir, we'll walk up the bridle path, this gravel path designed originally for horseback riders. It's very green still. Some of the leaves are changing as some people have mentioned in the chat, but we're not at the peak of autumn just yet. But the day I walked around here was so cool, but sunny. It was one of those perfect days to walk around. And I think the last few weeks and I hope the next few weeks to come are to me like the best time to get outside. You can wear a long sleeve shirt, 
but you're comfortable walking around and the hints of the seasons changing um i don't know they just really cheer me up and um it's an exciting time to walk around because it's such a short lasting beauty and some of the trees are still very green they look like they're in summer like this turkey oak i saw on the way to the reservoir wanted to point this out because it has these really interesting acorns and i have the luxury of getting to work in the park so i always have a lot of time in the park but i always encourage you to stop and smell the roses because you'll find some cool details like this that you may have missed otherwise there were some there was uh, some fall foliage on my my stroll as well like this elm tree that's turning this beautiful yellow yellowish green color here with its leaves falling off creating this um pile of litter below it which is really lovely and to get to the reservoir in case you want to re recreate this route we walk just south and we are here at the jacqueline kennedy onassis reservoir like i mentioned it's this huge 106 acre landscape at its deepest point it's 40 feet deep and the volume of the reservoir it's over 1 billion gallons. So it's no longer a functioning reservoir. It was decommissioned in 1993. But uh, instead of destroying and paving it over, it was um, decided that it would be kept as this beautiful water body. I'm very glad they made that decision um, because uh, I think it gives some of the best views of the city. And uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before. I mentioned Brendan had done, done a weekly walk. There are some details. I'm thinking of like this beautiful wrought iron fence that I'm not gonna go into too much detail about. Brendan did discuss these. So one of my colleagues, if they haven't already, will link the YouTube video to his walk in case there are some details you'd like to learn that I don't go over. But anyway, back to our walk. We'll see this cutting edge modern skyline of Midtown in the distance. And as we walk around the, the reservoir, it's good to keep in mind that we should walk counterclockwise because it's a very popular place for walking and jogging and for everyone else's safety and for our safety, we wanna go with the flow of traffic. And as we do so, our view will change from that 21st century imposing midtown view back a hundred years to the Upper West Side characterized by uh, bow arts and art deco architecture, such as the El Dorado building in the upper right hand corner of the image. This might look very familiar to a building we saw on several of our last weekly walks, the San Remo, same architect, virtually identical, but up about uh, 20 or 30 blocks. So we'll go around the path, which is now known as the Stephanie and Fred Schumann running track the generous donors who funded the last restoration of the track in 2015. And this is somewhere that, yeah, it's a really popular place to visit in Central Park. And I'm always fascinated with the, um, the landscapes that are larger than life. I mean, they're very beautiful to visit, but they're also sort of, that popularity is reinforced by culture as well. Uh, you know, when I was reading a bit more about the reservoir, I was noted that some films taking place around the reservoir also increased its popularity or the perception that this is a place that would be great for running, which it is. And this is a, a image from Marathon Man, which was a 1976 Dustin Hoffman film um, that was popularized the reservoir as a place to run, although people were running here long before that. Interesting in this uh, picture, you can see the old chain linked fence that was about 10 feet tall and restricted views more so than the smaller, more ornate wrought iron fence that we have today. And of course, being such a popular place to run and walk, it naturally deteriorates over time. You can see an image from before the latest restoration on the left where the surface wasn't level and there are puddles gathering. So like all these landscapes, that are used a lot. I mean, we get 40 million visitors a year. So naturally things just kind of wear down after a while, it requires some um, renovation. And on the right, you can see it, the path was leveled, the curbs were redone, there was better drainage systems adding, and there was 
uh, improvement of the landscape around the reservoir. I didn't take this picture actually, this is from our photo archives, but you can just see wherever you're running around, you get these beautiful views. I'm not a jogger myself, but this would be probably the place that I would pick ideally to come exercise. And here's a photo that I took. So we're back on the track, walking around. And from this vantage point, instead of looking at the Upper West Side that's um, blocked by trees, now we're looking across the reservoir to the Upper East Side. Like the Upper West Side, most of the buildings we're seeing are residential here. In the foreground, just above the tree line, there are several cultural institutions. It's known as Museum Mile. But from this far away, the only one I could make out was the Guggenheim, which I outlined with this red square here. It's very easy to pick out because of its distinct roof, but the Metropolitan Museum of Art is over there and so many others. Well, that's down a bit further, but there are a number of other ones here. I also saw some great plants around the reservoir as I was walking around, avoiding joggers as I was taking pictures, uh, like this coral berry, this pink cluster, that really stands out. And then pokeweed here, which is a native plant you'll see all over Central Park with this, it almost looks like, stem almost looks like rhubarb to me. It's a very pink and bright. And I saw this plant as well. This shrub here is called beauty bush and it's got these star shaped white petaled flowers and this subdued pink color to it. That was really beautiful uh, on this cool day I was walking around. And after these views, we found ourself, ourselves on the southern end of the reservoir. Um, we're about to check out this cool bridge. But right before we see that, I wanted to point out that there are markers around here. So yeah, it is a really great place to jog because you can even measure how far you've walked or, or ran. We're at the one mile mark now. Uh, it begins on the east side where we're gonna end our walk. But it's nice to know because you can get an exact idea of how far you've walked around and it's 1.58 miles so it's, it's quite a distance and right across from that mile marker uh, we're going to get to see uh, bridge number 27 this victorian cast iron bridge designed by calvert vox in the 1860s you can see the handrail here i've added um, a different perspective here really ornate it takes you over the bridle path towards the Great Lawn. And uh, I don't know, I think these things really complement the landscape because they're not overstated and they're these gigantic features, but they have a beautiful detail to them. And I neglected to end the other poll before. So in case you're curious who is attending our walk today, I'll share that now. And once again, we have so many of you the majority of you that have attended nearly all of our walks. So thank you so much. And if this is your first time or first few ones, um, thank you so much for joining us. So I'll stop the share now and we'll get back to our walk. You'll see birds, a lot of birds around the reservoir as well, especially waterfowl. Um, I couldn't quite make out these ones. I think these uh, are American coots, which are small black, um, birds, you'll see over a dozen species of waterfowl at different times of year, of the year, partly because, um, you know, it's such a huge water body, it never freezes over. So it's a good um, place for these birds to come, especially in the winter. I have a really bad joke we use as tour guides often in the park and the catcher in the rye holding Caulfield asks, where do the ducks go in the winter at the pond? And the simple answer is that they come here to the reservoir because it never freezes over. But there's some truth to that because you'll see so many different birds here. I'll spare you more bad any more bad jokes. And we'll make it to uh, the gatehouse here, which was uh, designed in tandem with Central Park. There was another, another reservoir in Central Park. This reservoir was designed and constructed in the early 1860s as Central Park was being created. Um, to act as a backup um, water supply to complement the uh, aqueduct system that existed in the city. Here we're looking at that gatehouse in a bit more detail here. Once again, designed by Calvert Vox. And this really was an engineering marvel at the time. 
So people would come here and visit it just for that. And I think during the 20th century, as the modern fitness movement kicked off, it kind of transitioned into this place where um, like a Zen place to come and run. And on Brendan's walk, he mentioned related to running, uh, Fred LeBeau, who was the founder of the New York City Marathon, really interesting character in New York history, so you should check that out. I wanted to highlight another uh, individual who was like a local celebrity and someone really important to the culture of uh, Central Park. And I think living in New York City that you often encounter really interesting characters from all walks of life. And um, today I wanted to just shortly discuss Alberto Arroyo, who was a, um, a man who really po helped popularize jogging in Central Park. Uh, some people were referred to him as the mayor of Central Park, and he unfortunately passed away in 2010. But he claimed to be the first person to start running around the reservoir in the 1930s. And I can't verify that, but regardless, he was someone who was apparently pr always present at the reservoir for decades, rain or shine, and the kind of person that would talk to uh, someone who was brand new jogging for the first time to people like Jacqueline Kennedy. Onassis, who were obviously, you know, really famous, important people. And it seems like he was just one of those down to earth people who loved one thing, jogging around the reservoir and would do it apparently 10 times a day until uh, close to when he was 90 years old when he passed away. And here's an image of Alberto at age 83, still nimble and running around. And whatever landscape you're exploring in Central Park, I, you know, you often find characters like this who really cared about um, one place and help prove that and build a culture. I think that's fantastic. And there's even a story that um, shortly before Jacqueline Kennedy Anassis passed away, she even came and thanked him personally for a, a note that he had given her a get well card. So uh, awesome character. Once again, Alberto Arroyo. And just across from the Southern Gate House there is another bridge, bridge number 24, another Victorian cast iron bridge here. It's a good place to warm up if you wanna run around the park. And just past that is Gilder's Run, an area lined with commemorative tiles um, for all, all sorts of celebrations and memories that people have. This is one of the ways we raise money. Um, and you can see here, there's this one I highlighted we love you, Michael, 65 years running. A lot of them have running or jogging themes, which I think is great. And I think that's um, just one of the many subcultures that is attracted to Central Park. And I've mentioned it is the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir about five times now, but this is something that's relatively newer in the park's history. This was named uh, that in 1994, shortly after she passed away. She herself lived nearby. She would come to this landscape and run and walk around. And um, the city decided to name the water body after her for her contributions to the city, which I think most notably I know about. Uh, she helped save Grand Central Terminal from being uh, destroyed, which uh, she did other things too, but that alone I think is a monumental achievement. So um, I think it's awesome they chose to name it after her. And here is a picture of her with her son enjoying Central Park. I could, didn't manage to find one of her going around the reservoir though. So if anyone can do that, that would be great. You can send it my way. Um, and here we are, just so you know, we're about to wrap up soon, um, but we've made it to the Southern end. We probably walked about a mile at this point and we're gonna wrap up with one last great view of the park. And I wanted to ask one more poll this time just a survey of what your favorite thing to do in autumn is when you visit the park. I suppose I should have included walking since that's what we're doing today. But there's all sorts of things you can do in the fall. I'm really looking forward to fall foliage. Someone asked in the chat earlier when I think the peak is gonna be. It does seem like the park is changing or the leaves are turning a bit earlier than last year. And it wasn't until the first or second week of November last year that we really got a lot of fall foliage. So I would hope in the next two weeks, but it's, you know, it's very difficult to tell. But th there, are some, um, there are some trees that are really lovely right now. So if you um, get a chance and you live nearby, definitely worth visiting. So I'll reveal the results on the last slide, but we'll walk down the bridle path on the east side here. 
we'll get to this staircase here and you can see like there are some hints of it um, like this tree that's mostly green still with some gold and yellow and i'll end the poll now let's see yeah fall foliage i would have to agree with you we had some birders in the chat in the chat as well exercise this is a good place to come for exercise and then nothing at all which is also a very valid reason to come to the park so thank you for sharing and i hope this kind of gets the wheels turning um, for things you can do if you haven't been able to get outside much recently and i'll end with one last view of the reservoir now we get to look at the el dorado head-on see a number of beautiful buildings across the way there and we'll get one last vista of this huge landscape and we'll see some birds all they all tend to sit around the middle there because there's a pipe a warm pipe that goes through there so another great landscape in the books we do this every week of course so i hope this one was enjoyable um, for you um, and i hope that uh, you learned something new we know these are only 15 minute programs so if you're wanting more um, content you can um, check out our website my colleagues will drop a link we do other tours virtual tours on tuesdays and thursdays so you can check that out really appreciate all of your support and interest in this program it's really my pleasure to get to share central park with you i know many of you have probably been here so many times and i hope you still get to enjoy it every time you come and for those of you across the world thank you so much for attending Please visit our website if you'd like to, centralparknyc.org slash mycentralpark. You can still share your story on our website. We'd love to hear from all of our visitors. And then you can download some resources like the Zoom background I'm using right now, which is gonna come in handy for everyone right now, as well as some coloring pages and word scrambles. And you can see our other social media platforms linked here as well. So please, if you'd enjoy this program, you can go onto our YouTube channel and watch more of these. I'll be back next week at 12.30 for a lunchtime stroll through Pilgrim Hill. Um, thank you again for joining and from the Central Park Conservancy, stay safe and be well. Thank you. <laughs>